I'm in my computer now and I'm gonna walk you through real quickly again the a four step process on how we use cold emails to get new clients and grow our business without spending money on ads and all that stuff, right? So first off, we're gonna cover steps steps one through three. Step four will be in a separate video, right? This is the, that's the actual sales portion of things. But step one is to create an ICP, an ideal client profile, to know who you're gonna be targeting, right? Know exactly who you're gonna be targeting. Step number two is to create a list of people who fit your ICP, who fit the criteria, right? And step number three is once you've created a list, you need to create a messaging sequence to go to those people on that list to generate an appointment, right? And it's not to get a sale, it's not to send them a link to buy now, it's to get them on the phone so you can close the deal on the phone, right? Which is step number four, which is to PH, get on the phone and close the deal, right? So this is the exact process that we use. I'm gonna cover steps one through three in this video, right? How to create an ICP, how to get the list, the tools that we use, and then how to create a messaging sequence and then automate the sending of that. All right, so let's jump right into it. So I have this little Google sheet here, and this is actually what we use when we're setting up a cold email campaign. This is a simple Google sheet, right? This is all you need. Now, what I want you to do first is create something that says, just create a tab that says ICP, right? And what the ICP is, again, ideal client profile. And you, this is actually what we used when we first started growth response, right? So you should know the industries that you're targeting. What other industries? Well, we're targeting computer software, internet, and information technology. Uh, and these are, this is from LinkedIn, right? These, these, these industry titles. Where are they located? What's the geography? Well, they're located in the USA, in Europe, in Australia. We actually just started with the USA though, just to keep it simple. And that was a big enough pool for us to target. Company size, how big are these companies? So we actually started with 11 to 50 employees. Okay, so how many employees are in these companies? I recommend you stick under 50 employees. If you're brand new, the bigger up you go, the harder or the longer the sales cycle is, right? So you wanna target the small business size, people who are in that like 11 to 50 employee range, okay? Job titles, who are you targeting? Well, we mostly started with founder level, but we also were targeting, uh, once we, we went through founders, we were also targeting C CEOs, chief, chief, chief executive officers, and CMOs, chief marketing officers, right? These are all people who could benefit or want to have a conversation about our service, right? So we these are all the titles. For you, it, it's most likely gonna be like the business owner, right? Or like if you're targeting like um, medical practices, it would be like a dentist or like a, I don't know, like a, a optometrist or whatever they call those things. Uh, so there's whatever you're targeting, you wanna list the job titles here, right? And you also wanna have the pain points and the problems. And if you don't know this, you need to research it, okay? Cause this is gonna be important for your messaging. So what were the pain points and problems of our market, of the, these SaaS companies? Well, first of all, they didn't, they're not generating enough high quality leads. Uh, second, they're, they're spending too much time on prospecting and data research tasks, right? We were, taught, we were doing research on, on platforms like Quora and seeing what people were asking in our market. And a lot of them were saying, oh, I spent way too, too much time, too much hours on prospecting and building lists, right? So we added that to the pain points. Also, we were seeing that a lot of founders, they were just starting their companies or they're just getting going and they didn't have the time or the budget to spend on building like a large sales team. So they wanted fast results. They wanted to get leads coming in now. They didn't want to wait months and months to do that, okay? Uh, so what are, we, what are we offering? What are you actually, what's your service that you're offering to the market to help them solve these pain points and problems, right? We were offering done for you LinkedIn prospecting, right? We're generating leads through outbound LinkedIn messages and outbound connection requests, okay? And expect the results. You should know this. So, so if you're doing like a drop servicing business, how you get this is you go to, you find a white label provider or a freelancer and you ask them these questions, right? You look for the service, what's included in the service, what are the expected results from their clients, right? And you can leverage that information to fill this in here, okay? So this doesn't need to be all you. If you wanna find a white label provider, you can ask them what's the expected results if I give you clients for, for this service, right? Now the benefits of eight to 12 appointments a month. Why do they want appointments a month or extra appointments? Well, it saves time for their sales team because that, that's what the sales team is doing, is, ge is trying to generate appointments through prospecting. So it saves time for them. Uh, it also saves money and time and resources on training, right? So they don't have to train their team and spend months, three, four months training their team on how to use LinkedIn or, or how to prospect in general. They can get going right away, right? And then also they get more high quality leads and appointments every month to help them increase sales. And that's what they want, right? So you can, you can see it's the inverse of all these things here, okay? So keep it simple, uh, do some research if you don't know these things, uh, but don't. this should take no longer than like a few hours or like a day to do, okay, at, at max. So once you've done this, you've created your the step one, right, we've, we've done this, cross that out. We're gonna go to step two, build your prospect list, okay? Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, 
uh, but what the, I'll show you the different places that we use, right? We use uh, find that lead, and that's for if we're targeting like B2B, like soft B2B SaaS companies or like uh, tech tech companies and all that stuff. When we're targeting B2B, we're gonna use find that lead. I mean, they source their, I think they source their data from LinkedIn. That's why we use that. If we want very specific businesses that have very specific attributes, we use Upwork. So let's just say that we want to target only medical spas who are who offer uh, cool sculpting, which is a certain type of procedure, right? We, if we want a very specific business that, that offers a very specific service like that, we'll hire someone on Upwork for like $300 or so to create a targeted list of those prospects that fit that criteria. If we're targeting local businesses, right? Uh, you can use something called D7 Lead Finder, and this is very good for like those local brick and mortar stores and, and local businesses in general, right? So these are the different places that we use uh, for the most part. You can also just go on Google if you want to save money because these all cost money to use, like no more than like 50 bucks a month or so. But if you don't want to do that, you can always just manually go to websites and find emails that way, okay? But these are the places that we use. So for this training for this video i'm going to show you uh, how we use findthatlead.com okay so i'm going to jump into this tool here and find that lead again is we use it mainly for b2b right for for targeting like agencies and other freelancers and information technology companies and SaaS companies we use find that lead so what you want to do is i'm going to show you why your icp is so important here you're going to click start new list and here's how i name it you just want to make it easy to identify right so i'm just going to do this software 11 to 50 employees, USA, um, founder, okay? So now I know exactly when I look at this list, who, who is in this list, right? You wanna be able to identify that. Where are they located? We're just gonna be United States. Job title is the founder. And industry, computer software, internet, information technology all right and then 11 to 50 employees so now what do we see here we have 2,900 people who fit this criteria and we grab this criteria directly from our icp right so we have the industries the geography the company size and the job titles right now the pain points and problems these these things are going to be used in the actual messaging but you can see here now what we have, we can just click generate list here, and I'm not gonna do this right now because I'm not trying to use credits on this, but if we click generate list, it's gonna search for the best prospects who fit that criteria. Then we click generate emails here, we click FTL servers, and this is gonna create a list and grab the emails of all the people on this list, okay? Now what this looks like, and I just, I'll just, I just already imported a completed list here, right? I just imported this. But I got this, what this looks like is, if we, if we click on Prospector again, see current, if I click Export CSV, it's gonna allow you to export only the correct emails, right, that I have 100% accuracy. That's what you want, so that you don't get like bounced emails and all that stuff, right? So once your list is done exporting, or done grabbing the emails, you can export it, and you can export only the correct emails so that you don't have delivery issues. And then you're gonna have a CSV that looks just like this, okay? And it has their first name, their last name, their position, their company, website, industry, company size, location, their LinkedIn profile, their email. And I'm just gonna delete this stuff because we know it's correct. We exported only the correct emails. So I delete this. This is all the information that we need for the most part. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, copy this. We would copy this, I would copy it into this sheet here to their first name. I would copy this into oops, their last name. You don't have to do it like this. This is just the way that, that I do it. Um, but you can just copy the whole sheet. I'm just showing you an example of how we how we have our, our virtual assistants do this. Uh, oops. Title. Company. Blah, blah. And the reason we need this information is because we're going to import it into a separate tool to automate the sending of these emails. Right, so we have this. Now we have, I'm just gonna do find that lead. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a list of first name, last name, company, title, email address, and the source of where we got them from, findthatlead.com. And we have a list of people who fit our ICP, our ideal client profile. We have a list of people we can send emails to, right? So that's step number two. We just did list creation, right? 
Now, step number three is to create a messaging sequence that's designed to generate appointments. So I have this tab here. There's a lot of different messaging differences and variations that we test with, right? What I'm gonna tell you now is you cannot just copy and paste this and expect it to work all the time and then complain like, oh, it doesn't work. I'm not getting appointments. I'm not getting sales. I'm not getting clients. You need to test things on your own and learn to just experiment, right? So what I'm giving you here is something that's worked very well for us. It's been very effective for us. That does not mean if you copy and paste it that you're gonna get the same results, right? So that's just not the way things work. I'm gonna show you what we use. Uh, one of the sequences that we use, we use many different variations depending on who we're targeting but this is a very simple one that we use, okay? So the breakdown of every cold email, you have a subject line, we have the intro, we have the big promise, and then we have like a proof element, right? And if you don't have proof, you can, if, again, if you're a drop servicing business and you have a white label provider, leverage their proof, leverage their testimonials on their social proof, right? And then we have a call to action. We also have, if you have some kind of authority content, like a guide or a white paper, you can add some kind of PS line with that, that builds credibility and authority, right? So here's an example here, and here's just some subject lines here that we use. We use, again, tons of different ones that we split test with. You have to split test on your own. I can't tell you what the best subject line is, but here's a simple one. Subject line, Sean found you on LinkedIn, and this would be the person's name, right? So this gets their attention, and then it shows where you found them, right? This, this, seems, to, this seems to work well because people wanna know, oh, this guy found me on a social media platform. What does he have to say, okay? So you wanna get them to open the email. You wanna make sure that you're not saying anything like, free offer inside, right? Those don't work. You wanna make sure it's just like casual and something you would kind of send to a friend or someone that, like, like a colleague you just met, right? So Sean, found you on LinkedIn. Intro, I came across your profile on LinkedIn and given your background, thought it made sense to reach out. Big promise, we have a done for you LinkedIn prospecting service for B2B SaaS companies that can help you generate eight to 12 more demos every month without wasting your sales reps time on prospecting. Proof, we've helped similar companies like A, B, and C to automate their lead generation and book eight to 12 more sales appointments per month, which has helped to increase sales. Is this something you need help with, right? So the call to action, we wanna get them to say yes or to say no, right? If they say no, we remove them from our list. If they say yes, we set up a time to chat with them, okay? So the PS line, we have a, a LinkedIn guide that we send out, so we just say, PS, here's a guide we created on how to help SaaS companies generate more appointments using LinkedIn, okay? Now, if I go back to my ICP tab here, you can see why these are so important. We, we play on the pain points and the expected results of our service, right? You wanna make sure that you have these things in your email, okay? So if we go back here, once we send this first email, you're gonna have, most people are not gonna respond to that first email. So what we wanna do is follow up, right? So three to four days after that first email, and the tool I'm gonna show you automates this, we wanna send a second email. And this is just to kind of bump, bump the, the last email to the top. A lot of people don't have time to respond right away or maybe they just didn't see it. And what we say is, hey, first name, or hey, Sean, just quickly following up on the email I sent a few days ago. Any thoughts on that? Our done for you LinkedIn prospecting service can help you generate more leads without spending hours every day on prospecting and data research tasks. Would it be useful, the call to action is, would it be useful to have a quick conversation on how we might be able to help you, right? So you can see, again, very short and to the point and value driven, like how we can help them, why, what's in it for them, why should they care, right? So if they care about generating more leads and they're not using LinkedIn and they are spending way too much time on prospecting and data research tasks, they're gonna wanna respond to, to at least hear us out, right? And again, notice we're not pitching them right away. We're not selling them, we're sending them a buy link. We're asking them to get on the phone and so we can talk to them, learn about their business, learn if it's a fit, and then we can offer them an opportunity to work with us if it does sound like it's a fit, okay? So the last message, email three, if they still don't respond, we, we send one more email after a week, and we might just say something like, hey, first name, I've reached out a couple times, I didn't hear back, and I realized I may have jumped the gun. My intent, my intent is not to be a pain, so this is gonna be my last follow-up. But if you're open to connect about generating more leads on LinkedIn, please hit reply to let me know. Either way, I wish you all the best, right? So you can see a really soft, just like, like a, an exit email, I guess. I don't know what to call it. Like a, like a send off email, right? You're gonna have a portion of people who respond to this and like, oh, sorry about that. I actually meant to respond, but I forgot about it, right? So I can't remember what the exact statistic is, but it, it's something like it takes eight to 12 touch points before someone responds or someone becomes a buyer, right? So you wanna make sure this is the reason why we follow up. And this is why we use a lot of platforms like LinkedIn and cold email and Facebook and Instagram is because it takes a lot of touch points to get on someone's radar if they've never heard about you before, right? So we follow up you know, th two to three different times and we're, our goal is still to get them on the phone with us, right? So if they don't, if they don't respond to this, then we stop contacting them. 
contacting them after this. We don't keep on following up like like eight to 10 different times on email because that will piss them off and will mark you as spam. But you can see here, it's just very short to the, to the point, sweet, value driven. Like why should they care? Why should they want to get on the phone with us, right? But that is our process here, right? So we just did this, uh, creating a message sequence. What do we actually use to automate the sending? There are a lot of different tools out there that you can use, but one of the ones that we use is called MailShake. And I believe this is like 20, 30 bucks a month now. And what this does is once you've created your messaging sequence here, right? You can go into MailShake, you can click create a campaign. I'm just gonna leave it as this. I'm gonna click next. You can import your list. I'm just gonna go here. Let's just do a, a test list here. And then you can import like the email address and their name, click next. Okay, so now everything imported. I skipped it a bit because I didn't want you to wait. Now all you have to do is plug and play, right? So we have here, we have our subject line, right? And you wanna make sure that this does um, first name or their name or whatever it is. Here's this name found you LinkedIn, okay? And then we're just gonna copy our, our email. Right, so we go name. Okay. Boom, boop, boop, boop. Oh crap. Face it out a bit. Okay, and so you can see here, we have our exact email from our sheet. We just copied and pasted it into here, and then we can add the follow-up. So I'm not, I'm not gonna waste your time and do all this, but you just set the amount of days, you have the, the actual subject line of the email, you copy and paste the text into here, and then when you're done, you just click Next. Oops. Next. Then you click next again and you schedule the actual email, right? This is gonna take a while because I think it's gonna prep the campaign, right? But you can see here, um, oh, here we go. So you can see, hi, Steve, and it personalizes it to their name. You can have the follow-ups go X amount of days after that automatically if they don't respond and then it has the exact messaging sequence that you created in the last step, right? So this is step-by-step. Step. This is how we use cold email to get new clients and grow our business without ads and without complex sales funnels and all that stuff, right? Cold email is still one of our best channels for client generation, new client generation, right? Because it's predictable, it's measurable, we can do it every single day, it doesn't cost much, like other than the, like, the, the tools that we pay a little amount for every single month. But we covered the ICP, we covered creating a list that fits your ICP, we covered creating a messaging sequence, and I also, also showed you the tools that we use, right? I actually work with, this is actually what we run as a service. We actually do cold emailing for people in our, our agency, right? So this, you can take this and run with it. Obviously you have to experiment with a different messaging here, right? But this is our step-by-step -step guide. This is exactly how we send cold emails and set everything up to send cold emails and get clients for our business, all right? So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, if you wanna see anything else around cold emailing or if you have any questions or comments or concerns, make sure you comment below. Leave this video a like if you, if you like long form guides like this. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. I will link to some other cold emailing and lead generation videos on the side here. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.